So you want to put some money aside for a house or a car deposit, but you don't want to tie it up for five years. Perhaps you have some extra cash available that you want to invest to try and keep up with inflation, or you just need a place to park a part of your emergency fund. What is the best investment on the South African market to achieve these short-term goals? Well, that is what we are going to find out today. Now, seeing that the Reserve Bank has hiked up the repo rate by more than 3.5% over the past year, the interest that you will now receive from your bank saving accounts is much more than what it used to be a year ago. The Gold Savings Account from Time Bank, which offers a 6% interest rate if your money is invested for more than 90 days, was a favorite for a very long time. But seeing that simple bank saving accounts and short-term notice accounts now offer a similar if not better deal, I decided to take on the challenge of finding the new best deal on the market for short-term savings. Now, as you can see on the ratecompare.co.za website, as of December 2022, the best seven-day notice account, which was from FNB, offered an interest rate of 6.9% with a minimum deposit of 1 million rand. The best 32-day notice account, which was from Access Bank, offered an interest rate of 7.75% with a minimum deposit of 5 million rand. The best 60-day notice account, which was also from Access Bank, offered an interest rate of 8% with a minimum deposit of 5 million rand. And the best 90-day notice account, which was also again from Access Bank, offered an interest rate of 7.45% with a minimum deposit of 5 million rand. Now this all sounds nice and all, but it kind of raises three concerns for me. Firstly, these are all notice or fixed deposit accounts, which means that if you urgently need the money, you'll have to pay an early withdrawal penalty, so it lacks liquidity. Secondly, in order to earn these high interest rates, you'll have to cough up a large minimum deposit, which very few of us actually have. And then thirdly, I would personally be quite wary for juicy interest rates offered by relatively new banks like Axis Bank, as we all know what happened to African Bank a couple of years ago. By locking your money for fixed periods with a single bank or institution, you are exposed to concentration risks, which means that if this bank goes under and becomes bankrupt, you will likely lose a lot of your money. Now, what if there is an investment which can offer inflation beating returns, which does not require you to tie up your money for fixed periods at a time and which is diversified enough so that you can avoid these concentration risks? Introducing money market funds. Now, before we go into too much detail as to what a money market fund is, we need to first discuss the differences between a money market fund and a money market account because although they do sound similar, they are two very different types of investments. A money market account, aka a core deposit account, is a form of a bank account offered by most banks. These types of accounts fall under the regulatory framework of the Banks Act and are defined by the FECA as short-term deposits. The interest rates that you will receive on these accounts are advertised upfront and are generally higher than what you would receive just from simple bank savings accounts. On the other hand, a money market fund is an investment product that is run and managed by a professional investment manager, kind of like a unit trust. As such, money market funds are regulated by the Investment Collective Schemes Control Act and are defined by the FECA as collective investments. In a unit trust, investors' funds are pulled together and are invested in an array of underlying assets, which in the case of money market funds generally include lower risk assets such as promissory notes, commercial papers, treasury bills and negotiable certificates of deposits. From a risk perspective, both the capital you invested and the interest rates are guaranteed in the money market account and although they are seen as low risk investments, you are still exposed to the risk of a single bank when it goes into financial difficulties. With money market funds, your capital interest is not guaranteed from the get go, but your money is much better diversified across many different banks and institutions. However, you do also face a similar risk that if one of these institutions goes bankrupt and defaults on its debt, you may also lose a portion of your money. 
With money market accounts, your money is highly liquid and you can add and withdraw any amounts, sometimes within the same business day. With money market funds, however, it may take anywhere between one and five business days for your withdrawal to process, as is typical for any unit trust investment. To summarize, a money market fund is therefore an actively managed diversified investment vehicle which does not just simply invest your money into a single bank called deposit account but rather actively looks for superior risk adjusted opportunities across the spectrum of short term investment instruments to provide higher yield which compensates the investor for taking on the additional risk. So in essence a money market fund would usually outperform a money market account and any other bank savings account for that matter and in my opinion everything considered is the superior product for short-term investments all right so as mentioned earlier money market funds invest in short-term securities like bank savings accounts commercial papers short-term fixed deposits certificates of deposits treasury bills and corporate bonds all of which must mature within less than 12 months. Now, if you're interested in what exactly these securities are and how they work, you can just go and Google it yourself. But for the purpose of this video, all you need to know is these are all instruments that are issued by the government, corporate companies and banks, where they essentially borrow your money for their own funding over a period of up to one year. Money market funds are seen as ultra conservative investments which aim to preserve capital, maintain liquidity and generate a sound level of income by paying out income on a monthly basis. Money market funds typically target returns in the region of 1 to 3% above inflation over the long term but this can fluctuate especially during periods of rapid interest rate hikes such as those we recently experienced and periods of tough economic environments where many businesses have to close down therefore defaulting on their corporate debt. Now most money market funds are managed in such a way that they comply with regulation 28 of the pension funds act which basically means that they can also be invested in your retirement annuity and pension fund. Right so now let's discuss what a money market fund can be used for. As you can see, a money market fund is a low risk investment which you can use to diversify your portfolio. It is ideal for those who are highly risk averse, who require monthly income distributions, but who seek returns that are higher than what normal bank savings accounts or deposits can offer. It is also a great place to park money for short term goals such as saving for a deposit on a house or a car or perhaps an upcoming holiday. And most importantly for me, it is a great place to protect and grow a part of your emergency fund as it offers the opportunity to keep up or even beat inflation which you simply cannot find with any bank savings account. But also, equally important, a money market fund is not suited for investments with a time horizon of more than one year given its lack of exposure to growth assets like shares and property. Alrighty! So now that you have a proper understanding of what exactly a money market fund is, let's look at a couple of things that you need to consider when deciding which money market fund to choose. First up is the fund size or its assets under management. The larger the fund, the more stable it is and therefore the better your money is protected. Large investment firms typically offer larger funds but in my opinion, any fund with a size of more than 1 billion rand should be fine. Next up is the minimum investment amounts. This includes the initial lump sum requirement to open the fund, the minimum maintenance amount, the minimum needed for additional lump sums and the minimum amount for debit orders. This is important especially if you do not have a ton of money to begin with and if you just want to grow your funds with smaller amounts at a time. Next up is the performance of the fund. Money market funds usually fall within the South African interest bearing money market ASISA unit trust category which is benchmarked against the Alexander Forbes short term fixed interest aka STEFI composite index. So you need to compare the money market's past performance not only with the performance of other similar funds within the same category but also against its benchmark and the CPI aka inflation rate as the whole purpose of this investment is to actually try and beat inflation. 
Now, all of this info can be accessed by downloading the fund's MDD or minimum disclosure document from Google. A good idea would be to look at the one year, three year and five year performance if it is available. Now, although past performance is not a reliable indicator for future performance, this will at least give you an idea of if the fund is managed well, especially when compared with its benchmark. Now, an important thing to note here is that the performance shown on the NDD is net of all fees and expenses. So what you see is what you as the investor will eventually get. On that note, let's talk about the fees. Seeing that money market funds are in essence unit trust which are actively managed you can expect to pay an annualized investment management fee on the mdd you will see that there's a total expense ratio aka ter a transaction cost aka tc and a total investment charge aka tic the ter is a measure of the actual expenses incurred by the fund and include the management fee vat auditors fees and trustee fees. The annual management fee, which is paid to the asset manager who actively manages the fund, is usually also included in the TER. The TC is the brokerage cost incurred when securities or assets are bought and sold. And then finally, the TIC is basically just the TER plus the TC. So the TIC or total investment cost is the total percentage that the money market fund will cost you every single year. Now some funds will include VAT when displaying the TIC, while others simply won't. So always make sure that the 15% VAT is included. Now the TIC is a good measure to start comparing the cost between different money market funds. But this is unfortunately not the only fee that you will likely pay. If you work through a financial advisor, they may also add another financial advisory fee, which can range anywhere between 0.5 and 3%. Now, if you need someone to hold your hand, then you can make use of a financial advisor. But setting up these funds is really as simple as applying online on their website. So I would personally try to avoid this fee. And then lastly, if you invest with large insurance investment firms, you may also need to pay an annual platform management or administration fee. This is important to note because this can easily double the fee that you end up paying and this is not always clearly advertised. So in order to get a full scope of all the fees that you will pay for each different fund, you can simply contact the fund's administrator and request the EAC, aka the effective annual cost. This is the number that you will need at the end of the day when comparing the true cost of different money market funds. Okay, lacquer. So just because I know that most of you are too lazy to go through countless of boring MDD documents from different funds and that I am simply oh look, I made a summary of the most common and well-known money market funds in South Africa, which include their fund size, one year and five year performance measured against each benchmark, as well as the TIC, EIC and initial lump sum required to open each fund. This is up to date until the end of November 2022. So if you watch this video in the future, then the numbers might look a bit different on those MDDs. So as you can see, the 91 money market fund has the largest fund size of 41.1 billion rand, whilst the Satrix money market fund is the smallest with 0.4 billion rand. The Allen Gray money market fund has the lowest TIC of 0.29%, whilst the PSG Money Market Fund has the highest TIC of 0.8%. But when you look at the EAC, which remember measures the true cost, the cheapest funds are those from Coronation and Signia, both with an EAC of 0.3%, and the most expensive one is still the one from PSG with 0.8%. The lowest initial lump sum required is from 10X Investments and the Signia Money Market Funds, being 1000 Rand, and the highest is from 91 and Allen Gray with 50,000 Rand. All of these funds manage to match or beat their benchmark, except for the one from Satrix. But honestly, seeing that they can all invest in only a limited amount of different investments, I would personally just choose the one with the cheapest EIC, which does not require an exorbitant initial lump sum amount to open. 
I would therefore personally shortlist the money market funds from Coronation and Signia, but really any one of these funds should be fine as long as the fees are not too excessive. So yeah, there you have it. Let me know which one you would choose. But remember, money market funds are only great for short-term investments up until about 12 months. If your time horizon is more than this, then let me know down in the comments and I can perhaps make a video on which funds you should consider for investment periods between 12 months and 3 years. Thanks for watching, you must all have a lucky day, cheers!